Hey guys, it's me, Jam, and welcome to episode 3 of Jam at the Movies. Uh, so for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at movies you should watch if you're a musician. Or music-themed movies, rock and roll-themed movies. So if you're in a band, you've either seen these movies or you should see these movies. So the first movie for today is Rockstar, which came out in 2001, and it stars Mark Wahlberg and Jennifer Aniston. So in this movie, Mark Wahlberg plays Chris Cole. Um, in the beginning of the movie, he's a lead singer for, for a tribute band, or another term for cover band of a very famous band which he is a very big fan of called Steel Dragon. So Chris and his band called uh, Blood Pollution cover Steel Dragon songs and Chris is a perfectionist so he wants to play the Steel Dragon songs note for note and with exact vocals just like how the real band plays the songs. It becomes a problem with his bandmates because they want to go in different directions. Um, his bandmates wanted to write original music while Chris wanted to keep imitating Steel Dragon. Chris gets into a fight with his guitarist on a blood pollution show. So in the next practice session, Chris finds out that he's been replaced because of his lack of originality. So one day he gets a phone call from the guitarist of Steel Dragon through a recommendation of some girls who have watched blood pollution shows. So he goes in for the audition and performs a Steel Dragon song and the band members are instantly impressed and they hire Chris immediately. So Steel Dragon starts touring with Chris and they are a big success. So. Um, Chris starts getting a real taste of the rock and roll lifestyle and he changes his name to Izzy. So eventually all the fame and success um, start getting into Chris's head and it starts affecting his relationship with manager slash girlfriend Emily. Uh, Chris tells Emily that uh, when the tour arrives in Seattle they will get back together. So when Steel Dragon does reach Seattle, um, Emily tries to reconnect with Chris and she goes to his hotel room. So she finds out that Chris has changed a lot because of his rock and roll lifestyle and he even forgets about um, their agreement to meet in Seattle. So six months later, um, Steel Dragon is going to record a new album in the studio and Chris presents them with um, some new material and cover art but he gets rejected by his bandmates and he was told that he was only hired in the band because he can imitate the former lead singer's voice so while playing one of their shows Izzy pulls in a fan named Thor and gives him the microphone and Thor finishes the rest of the concert and Chris or Izzy um, starts to realize that being in Steel Dragon was not what he thought it was so Chris goes back to Seattle and he rejoins with his former guitarist and they start to write original material he gets back together with his girlfriend Emily and the movie ends there so one of the lessons we can learn from this movie is no matter how famous or popular you get, keep your feet on the ground uh, and never forget about the people who were there for you. And sometimes the things we want most does not end up like we thought it would be. So the next movie we're going to talk about is School of Rock um, which came out in 2003 and it is one of my favorite movies. It stars Jack Black, Mike White, Joan Cusack, and Sarah Silverman. 
So Jack Black stars as aspiring guitarist Dewey Finn, who gets kicked out of his band for being too loud and crazy, which is just not what his bandmates want. So meanwhile, he has a problem with his roommate Ned Schneebly and Ned's girlfriend Patty, because Dewey has not been able to give his share of the rent, and he promises Ned that if he's able to win the Battle of the Bands, he will be able to pay his share of the rent and he asks Ned to leave his girlfriend because Patty is too loud and always complaining. So while Ned is out, um, Dewey gets a call from a school that is looking for substitute teachers. So Dewey sees it as an opportunity and poses as Ned to get the job. So he goes to the school and meets his students, but he has no idea how to teach a class. So he tells the students, you don't have to learn anything, just go to recess, play. So the kids start to get confused and wonder why Dewey or Mr. S wouldn't teach them anything. So one day Dewey is walking by the music room and he finds out that the kids have talent in playing instruments. So he gets this idea that if he will be able to teach the kids a song to play, then he will be able to enter the Battle of the Bands. So he tells the kids that there's going to be a big project and all the other schools are competing. And he starts assigning different roles for each of the kids. So meanwhile, um, Dewey is asking Principal Mullins played by Joan Cusack, if the kids could go out on a field trip. But he doesn't tell her that he's taking the kids to Battle of the Bands. So Dewey takes Rosalie out on a date, and he finds out that she is actually cool, and she likes to let loose and drink beer. So she starts to like Dewey, but she's still unaware of Dewey's plan. So meanwhile, the kids are starting to practice for a battle of the bands. And one of the kids, Zach, who plays guitar, writes a song. And then Dewey decides that they're going to use Zach's song um, to rehearse for the project. So Principal Mullins is inviting Dewey to teacher's night, but it happens to be the same night as the battle of the bands. So meanwhile, Ned gets a call from the school to pick up a check, but they find out that Dewey has been posing as Ned. So Ned and Patty go to the school and they tell the police that Dewey is an imposter. So the next morning, the kids go to Dewey's apartment and they tell him that they need to finish what they started. So they successfully play the battle of the bands, but they lose to Dewey's old band. But the audience still kept chanting School of Rock, School of Rock, so they play an encore. So the lesson that we could learn from this movie is if you have a dream to start your own band, don't give up on your dream and don't let anyone tell you that you're not good enough. So the next movie on our list is That Thing You Do released in 1996. It was written and directed by Tom Hanks. And it stars um, Tom Everett Scott, Jonathan Skitch, Steve Zahn, Ethan Embry, Liv Tyler, and of course himself, Tom Hanks. So this movie is about a band from the small town of Erie, Pennsylvania in the 1960s. And they had a hit song and they became famous very quickly. The movie begins with James Mattingly, or Jimmy, the guitarist and vocalist of the band, uh, wrote a song and they wanted to enter the local talent show. The problem was their drummer, Chad, played by Giovanni Ribisi, um, had an accident, so they had to find a replacement. So they approached Guy Patterson, played by Tom Everett Scott, who was a great jazz drummer and was a friend of Lenny, the other guitarist, played by Steve Zahn. So the song, That Thing You Do, 
started out as a slow ballad, and Guy Patterson was an instant fit for the band. So, on the night of the talent show, um, Guy Patterson was playing the beat very fast, and the other members of the band had to adjust. The name of the band was The Wonders, but they were using an O and E, so the people were getting confused and were calling them the O'Neaters. So the O'Neaters won the whole talent show, and they were invited to play in a restaurant by the airport, where they fixed the song, That Thing You Do, and it became an instant hit with the crowd. So after they were playing, um, a fan approached them and um, suggested that they record the song. So Guy had a relative named Uncle Bob and they recorded the song in a church. So they were selling the record at the restaurant and a talent scout happened to buy one of their records. So the talent scout saw that there was potential in the record to become a number one hit. So the Oneaters they signed a contract to allow them to put the song on the radio and instantly it becomes a big hit. So they play their first major show and everything goes horribly wrong. Um, Guy Patterson met up with Mr. White, played by Tom Hanks, who is the owner of a major record label. So Mr. White offers Guy and his band to be part of the Playtone stable of artists. And they start to tour the whole United States playing their song. So Jimmy, who has a girlfriend named Faye, uh, played by Liv Tyler, starts to get romantically involved with one of the Playtone stars named Diane Dane. So the O'Neaters, now the Wonders, were set to play in the Hollywood Television Showcase, but they were missing their bass player and was replaced by a bass player hired by Mr. White named Wolfman. So after the Wonders played the Hollywood Television Showcase, um, Jimmy started having problems with Faye because the Television Showcase had announced that Jimmy was engaged, which was later revealed that it was the work of Mr. White. Jimmy leaves the band and Guy was the only one left. So Guy apologizes to Mr. White and Mr. White tells him that it's a very common tale for a band with one hit song to break up so quickly. At the end of the movie, Guy and Faye get together and in the credits it's revealed that they got married. And Guy starts a music school. So, what can we learn from this movie? Number one, once you attain fame and success, keep your feet on the ground. Number two, do not let anything come between the members of the band. May it be musical differences or love triangles, keep the band's relationship strong. So the fourth movie you should definitely watch if you are a musician is Bohemian Rhapsody. And it stars Rami Malek, Lucy Boynton, William Lee, Ben Hardy, and Joe Mazzello. So when this movie was released in 2018, it received rave reviews, especially of the performance of its main star Rami Malek as Freddie Mercury which also earned Rami Malek a Best Actor Oscar. This movie was made for uh, longtime fans of the legendary band Queen and also a new, for a new generation of Queen fans, which also reignited a love for Queen's music all around the world. Now, some of the scenes of the movie are inaccurate to the real-life events of Freddie Mercury and Queen, but we're going to focus more on what happened in the movie. Now, um, Freddie Mercury's original name was Farrokh Bolsara, and he was a fan of the local band named Smile, whose members were Brian May and Roger Taylor. 
Smiles vocalist Tim Staffel quits the band and Farrokh auditions to be the new vocalist of Smile. Brian May and Roger Taylor were instantly impressed by um, Farrokh's vocals and he is quickly hired into the band. And he also meets his girlfriend Mary Austin when he became the vocalist of the band. They went on to sell their tour van to record their first album and Farrokh changes the band's name to Queen and he changes his own name to Freddie Mercury. In 1975, they record their fourth album, A Night at the Opera, which of course um, debuted the famous song that we know today as Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, in the movie, there is a character called Ray Foster, who is an EMI executive, but um, this was not a real person. He was based off of Roy Featherstone, who is the actual EMI executive, and his first impression of Bohemian Rhapsody was it was too long to become a single because it was six minutes long. Eventually, Bohemian Rhapsody becomes a hit. Meanwhile, um, Freddy has an affair with their manager, Paul Prenter, during the Queen World Tour. Freddy comes clean with Mary that he is bisexual and they end their engagement. Freddy also meets a waiter named Jim Hutton and they share a kiss together and he tells Freddy to find him when Freddy learns to like himself. This movie also explains the origins of the songs We Will Rock You and Another One Bites the Dust. Another One Bites the Dust is a product of Queen experimenting into disco music. Meanwhile, uh, Freddy's relationship with his bandmates begin to turn sour when they released the music video for I Want to Break Free in which they appeared in drag. It gets banned from MTV and Freddy decides to pursue a solo career. Freddy starts abusing drugs and alcohol and participates in group sex. Meanwhile, Mary tries to convince him to return to the band and perform in the benefit concert Live Aid. Freddy reveals to his bandmates that he has AIDS, but he wants to focus on returning to music. On the day of Live Aid, um, Freddy reconnects with Jim, Mary, and Mary's husband, and they watch as Queen performs their hits Radio Gaga, Bohemian Rhapsody, Hammer to Fall, and We Are the Champions. Freddy then dies of AIDS on November 24, 1991, at age 45. So what can we learn from this movie? Um, number one, being in a band has its ups and downs. You have to put aside your differences so that you can make great music together. Number two, music is more about talent than looks. Freddie Mercury accepted his front teeth because it helped him achieve his unique voice. Be yourself and work with whatever God has given to you. So that is it guys for my four must watch movies if you're a musician. If you like this video please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. So till the next video guys, see you later.